Hey Troops, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ryan and I'm a former Royal Marines Commando from the United Kingdom and today we've got an update on Ukraine. It is the 9th Friday and there's been another intercepted phone call that um, Insights from Russia and Ukraine channel has kindly interpreted um, for everyone to watch. So we're going to use that footage. Um, I think it's okay because he's said in previous videos that it's okay. So yeah, Russian soldier realises he won't return home from Ukraine. Um, gives a different perspective on things. We see a lot about, you know, Ukraine and stuff, but what is it like for the Russian soldier on the ground? I know a lot of people don't actually care. I'm not saying I do in particular. I'm just trying to look at it from the other side. This is a side that we don't normally see, guys. So we're going to get into it anyway. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. By doing so, you are supporting me, a former commando, a veteran now in um, this YouTube venture, and I'd really appreciate it, guys. If you've joined the Patreon, link is in the description. Thank you, troops. Please do consider that because that's where we put all of our ad-free, uncensored content. But anyway, enough of that. Let's just get straight to this video. Boom, let's do it. Okay, so it says all is good. Uh, all is going to be good. Nobody will be fucking killed. Russian soldier Christina, it's freaking okay in that order to get out of here. You need to be a superhero in order to get out of that effing Ukraine. Right, so starting the phone call off, it seems pretty, uh, pretty crazy. I think I've got it on too fast as well. Let me change the playback speed. Boom, there we go. So he's speaking to his wife, Artem, but how about those who are on vacation right now? Oh my goodness. Right, so they're arguing about obviously coming home. I can get I can get this, I can understand it. You know, my wife always um well she couldn't get in contact with me when I was on operational deployments and stuff because you just can't get in touch unless I rang from a sat phone, a satellite phone. It was um she had to ring pretty much the chain of command who was still on camp and she used to find out bits and bobs of information when we were coming back, when we might be coming back and stuff. But other than that, it's um it's something that you're not really gonna be sharing with your wife anyway when on deployment for security reasons it's called OPSEC operational security so the fact that he's getting phone calls when he's in this war zone he's talking about when he's getting back and stuff and he's giving information out there about you know the guys who have already left and stuff like that after three months um or they've run away that's yeah uh, you know obviously a lot of a lot of information coming out which shouldn't really be getting out troops especially over a phone call because like we're watching this right now because it's been bloody intercepted so that should tell you everything yeah yeah, you know, he's so right in terms of him actually talking about, you know, coming over there for money and stuff. He's out there on the ground right now, so he's got a very different lived experience of what it is actually like on the ground. And this is the thing, guys. You know, war might be glamorized. Even in these things which I'm doing now in my reaction videos, they might be perceiving it and going, oh, that looks pretty good. I wish I could get involved. I wish I was a bit younger and stuff. Troops, trust me, it's nothing like your perception. It's like um, it's like the very first time you step into the gates of a military barracks. As soon as you do so, you think, oh, this just feels different. It's a different environment completely war is a horrendous environment there's very 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 few people actually enjoy war very very few i've met probably one out of a thousand troops all right that really really enjoy it on the front lines and stuff there's elements of it that's fun but most of it is shit to be honest with you never mind being in ukraine or as a russian not getting paid well you know they have to worry about the getting the correct kit uh worry about whether the orders they're getting are actually um uh, are justified from the, the command structure and stuff. So there's loads of things I have to worry about. This guy's obviously worried about his friend who was a volunteer, and um, it's just a sad state of affairs, troops, that's for sure. 
Але ну, тут насправді мені сподобалась дівчина чи жінка його, я не знаю, хто це, але мені її коментарі сподобались. Але чоловіка дуже тяжко слухати, однімати. Так, да, я розумію, тяжко, але взагалі чому вони туди йшли. The woman from the next phone call I definitely heard in another interception, so probably her son is still alive. By the way, it's not a Russian soldier, it's soldier from the so-called DPR. So let's listen to it. Так слушай, что у вас там вообще? Ты рассказываешь, что у вас там. Ничего у нас хорошего нету. Так один, мы все на этом же месте? Все на этом же месте. Right, so straight off the bat, the mother's got a little bit of sense saying, where are you at the same spot? Um, still a little bit more information than would uh, you would like for operational security. You shouldn't even be talking about where you're at and stuff like that. You shouldn't even be on the phone, but the fact that she's got a little bit of sense to go, you know what, where are you at the same spot? Not giving any kind of direct um, information out there. The mum's actually quite smart in this, and the soldiers responded, yeah, at the same spot. <laughs> There, that's the point in which the whole content changes and the intercepted message is going to be relaying back certain, you know, parts of that information going, ah, okay, everyone is leaving. You know, this these little bits of snippets of information and, and intercepting multiple phone, um, phone calls will build up what we call a battle picture. I also worked in uh, information exploitation group in the Royal Marines, and, you know, it's these little snippets of information that you might think is useless to you, but you don't know what the next man has and the next man has and the next bit of information that the next man has. You put that all together in this spider web and this information suddenly reveals itself to you to be something grander, something bigger than you ever imagined. And uh, without getting too in-depth into some of the jobs I was involved in, we actually caught and did a massive drugs bust off loads of irrelevant bits of information, or at least they seemed so in the beginning. And uh, we put all these information together, thinking nothing of it, and actually it, we, we ended up catching um, someone who was doing some naughty stuff. So, you know, it does, um, it does make a difference. The little bits of information that you think are irrelevant when you put it into the battle picture and put it into this pot and stir it up what you get at the end is a lot of information actually that is worthwhile and uh, can put these troops in danger that's for sure не поспать, не пожрать. Ну, а командир ваш уже с вами? Right, this commander hasn't been seen yet. Funny that, isn't it? Especially when we're talking about the conditions, the weather conditions, they're not getting leave. They said they're not allowed to go on vacation, which we know in the military to be leave or annual leave or whatever you want to call it. A bit of time off, a bit of R&R, rest and recuperation. Um, they're not letting them leave because guess what? It's uh, <laughs> That's the lies, the many lies that they've been given. And um, yeah, I'm not surprised. And this, he's saying there that You can't even imagine how we live. We live in a swamp. Yeah, I do. I can believe that, all right? I've been in swamps myself, and I have lived there myself in uh, military. And and we were in, you know, the, the British military obviously look after us a lot better than most militaries around the globe, so I can only imagine how bad it is for him on the ground there. Now, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's funny that the brigade commander hasn't came out yet. You know, the weather's bad. It's uh, getting into the winter time. It's a bit colder now. It's like, uh, you know, a little bit muddy. I don't suggest that the commander's coming anytime soon, that's for sure. Они боятся, что в прогуратуру, потому что здесь снабжения никакого нету, здесь ни еды. No food or anything. Horrendous. Trying to fight a war. Ну, понятно. Мы собрались с липецкими пацанами. Мы выберемся отсюда. Пацаны отсюда уходят каждый день. So people are deserting that place as well. That's what happens when you are fighting wars and you're not looked after and you're in a foreign land. It's very easy for these troops to just put the weapons down and go, you know what, hey, we surrender, we want we want out. And uh, that happens all the time in war, when, especially when the troops are not looked after and they haven't got a relevant cause to fight for. That's the most important thing, troops. Anyone watching this who's fought and who has a relevant cause to fight for in certain lands feels more, um, more of a reason, valid reason to be there. 
I think a lot of the Russian troops, uh, you know, don't actually have a valid reason to be there. In their hearts, they know they shouldn't be there, so they don't want to be there. It's quite easy for them to leave, especially when the conditions become a little bit too austere, a little bit um, arduous for them. They go, nah, I'm out. I'm getting the hell out of here. And hours leave through the rear, they go to the borders where just effed up idiots who sent our IDs home. Wow. So, again, a little bit of irrelevant information you would you would seem. Well, not necessarily, you know. That information's been accepted and we've now got information that they're leaving through the rear passage of where they're actually located. Uh, it only takes one phone call to get an artillery strike on that position where they think they're located. And uh, guess what? These guys who want to leave the battle space uh, no longer can. So, uh, again, just to, just to point out to you guys just how important information is um, and why you should always try and keep operational security you know as best as you can when i was in the military it was really 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 harnessed and uh, and and it was a lot of onus on operational security we had lessons on it we were trained to um preserve operational security as best as we can and uh, obviously these guys haven't had nowhere near that level of training. And it goes without saying, one of the first port of calls for remaining um, and, and, and having an operationally secure environment is guess what? No phones on operations, simple as that. And there'll be delegated timeframes of when you can maybe use your phones. So if you're on what well, I was on Op Cougar, Operation Cougar was on ship, you know, a good few months out of the 10 month deployment. And when you were on ship, yeah, a little bit more relaxed, depending on where you were, what waters you were in. You can use your phone for certain time frames when you're in um, a safe and secure environment. But guess what? When you got closer to certain borders, certain waters, you weren't allowed to use your phones and those phones were confiscated and locked away because they can actually destroy um, operational planning and uh, they're, they're really, really bad potentially for operational security. And you know what it's like, guys? You give someone an inch, they will take a mile. Ми дуже часто зараз слухаємо прихоплення, і вони всі кажуть, як їм так там тяжко, їх не відпускають додому, вони там, начебто, в плену, їм не дають їсти, вони лежать в багнюці. Okay, so that's um, the the original link to the channel will be in the description as always, guys. It's um, Insight from Ukraine and Russia is a fantastic channel where they obviously given uh, I don't know how they're getting these interceptive phone calls, but they're really really interesting to give a different perspective on the battle space in Ukraine, and uh, I really do appreciate this channel interpreting all of that information for us to be able to then give an opinion out there. So go support Insights from Ukraine. Drop a comment um, from me and. Yeah, troops, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on the ground, um, in the comment section, rather, on the ground, about operational security and its, um, and its importance. Please, I would be glad uh, to speak to you guys in the comments. And once again, if you're not following me on Instagram, Twitter, and everything else, please consider doing that. Drop a comment in, uh, check the description box and support me on Patreon, guys. It, um, it really does help me as a content creator. And being able to give you ad-free, you know, uncensored content is um, is actually a real pleasure. We're putting content out there every single day now, and the viewers are really, really enjoying that format as well. So go check it out. That's all you have to do. Don't get the higher tier. Get the lower tiered um, entrance to P Patreon because, you know, I'm, I'm allowing everyone in the Patreon to watch all of the content. I'm not going to categorize it or anything. So, yeah, that's it, troops. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and thanks for supporting the channel yet again. I'll see you in next time. Peace.